Okay, you go ahead. Okay. Good. Um, just to give a little bit of your insights into this topic. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. So I'm Andrew Sais. I'm working in uh, DG Agri in the you unit. You want to stand or sit down? Yes, I think I will stand and sit up. Uh, ah, okay. For you. And uh, so I'm, I'm working on ACP and development issues. And I was called a few hours ago to replace our EU uh, chief economist for agriculture. And, um, who, uh, and so it brings uh, excitement and fear uh, <laughs> to address <laughs> such a knowledgeable uh, assembly. And, uh, but I, I will take this opportunity to de deliver like uh, corporate, uh, some corporate messages and uh, as well uh, uh, some uh, thoughts. I, I'll, I'll be brief. Um, and I don't pretend to be as comprehensive as you just have been like presenting the results of, uh, of uh, your thoughts. But um, I was in a panel yesterday and uh, it was the panel for feeding the planet together. And uh, they asked us at some point uh, what was more, more important between like uh, increasing food productivity, addressing climate change, uh, food waste, or uh, social justice. Um, and then uh, it seems that the people uh, mostly uh, responded to the climate change that was uh, more important. But obviously, I mean, uh, uh, the question was uh, tricky, and all four uh, uh, obviously need to be uh, to be addressed. And uh, I really believe the shared challenge uh, is really to develop this sustainable food system that you've just been uh, discussing uh, about and to be able to, from the EU perspective, to focus the international uh, debate uh, uh, on uh, evolving and toward a more uh, sustainable system. Uh, I'd like to refer to the part, to the triple uh, uh, objective of agriculture as the shooter uh, to it like to uh, obviously produce enough food uh, by 2050, raise the income of the farmers, and uh, conserve the, the natural uh, resources. And uh, a personal thought uh, that I'd like to bring is like, usually we treat the, the food security concept as having uh, four main uh, pillars, which are the access, availability, the quality, and uh, the, the stability. And I really believe like we have not sufficiently looked at uh, maybe the integration, uh, the complexity of the, having these four uh, pillars uh, uh, addressed together, but also like at the uh, uh, governance issue, uh, which how to bring this food security and uh, uh, always keeping in mind like the right uh, uh, to food uh, approach, and uh, which uh, uh, basically it's uh, how you empower the people, like in a nice participatory uh, workshop uh, as we have uh, uh, today. So uh, from the DG Agri perspective, I can say uh, that yes, the only possible future for agriculture is sustainable agriculture. I mean, uh, I think, and for that, the new impetus is needed like for uh, the, the drivers of this sustainable system. And I will focus on the, the research and innovation uh, uh, issue as, as the key, uh, also as key drivers. So um, I think the, the, the common agricultural policy uh, with uh, its uh, recent uh, reform and uh, have, uh, have indeed moved uh, toward uh, more integration of uh, uh, research uh, innovation. Maybe I can mention like uh, the new uh, European Innovation Partnership, which is uh, 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 really a basic, uh, uh, a simple idea to bring the farmers to respond to the uh, uh, to bring the researcher to respond the, to the farmer's needs, or vice versa. And, uh, and also we have, uh, uh, so that it, it's, it's getting started, but uh, we can uh, also see that in Africa, uh, the FARA, which is the Continental Research uh, Body, is also adopting such uh, uh, an approach. Nothing new. Uh, I'd like to mention Paulo Freire, who uh, in Brazil also uh, 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 worked on a, a, a campaign to uh, 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 teach people how to write and read, thanks to diagram, and using this, this approach of empowering and the, the people, right? So uh, we have another, um, now, uh, the, the, a new research agenda, Horizon 2020, uh, which also uh, will uh, have a great focus on, uh, on innovation and research. 
and as well under the rural development program uh, we also have uh, a lot of uh, possible activities am i fine with the time uh, two minutes left one minute. one minute great okay so basically i think this should lead us like to have more knowledge and uh, and be able also to share this this knowledge with uh, our partners so uh, definitely like supporting a, a knowledge base agriculture and uh, by strengthening the research innovation uh, bridging the communication gap between the farmers the researchers the agribusinesses this is what we need and uh, to, to really harness the current uh, agri technology revolution uh, there's a revolution uh, we have a, a in Europe, fantastic Copernicus uh, red of satellites that will uh, bring us to a major uh, shift in terms of analysis. Uh, and uh, uh, um, so what will we do with all this uh, uh, data? It's another challenge. So uh, I'd like to mention also, obviously, like that the, we need to, to have this improved agroecological approach. Uh, and uh, and, um, and we have we need to do more. But to, f to conclude, like, uh, I think it's really important that we share this uh, knowledge, this fantastic knowledge with the partners and to find also a better way to uh, 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 share them and uh, also to always keep in mind that uh, developing countries in particular, they obviously should take the lead for the, their own uh, development, mobilizing, mobilizing the budget, the enabling environment, fostering the, the inter-regional trade and uh, uh, we should support them to, to establish, their, achieve their own food uh, sovereignty. And uh, I believe agriculture is obviously a great driver of development. To end my, uh, <laughs> I would like just to leave you with a more philosophical thought that I believe that in our uh, uh, education, like if we would have uh, more knowledge uh, integrated on the on sociology, how to live together, on anthropology, where we are coming from, on biology, like uh, how we are being made, maybe all this question, uh, we would find a better and a, a, a solution and faster solution. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. You have a few minutes. I have a few minutes and I believe Excellent. it's important to remind at the start that Jules is working for DG Agri and not for Europe. Aid. No, I'm teasing Jules, but uh, whenever he speaks before me, I have nothing left to say. Uh, no, I was uh, very excited by um, this lab for uh, one reason, is that it is an excellent sounding board to see if the policies developed by the Commission are, I would say, responding to the key concerns of the stakeholder. Uh, there are some aspects which are at the top of our priorities and which have been uh, addressed here very uh, deeply. First of all is that food security is not anymore a question of producing enough calories. It is even not anymore a question of averting humanitarian disaster. It is a question also of economic growth and social justice. The fact that today one child out of four is suffering from chronic undernutrition because their parents cannot offer them the care they deserve and so that they will not reach the full potential. They will not grow, up, grow in the life up to the potential they should. This is a question of social justice, and this is now perfectly perceived like that. And this, it brings the issue of food security and nutrition at another level of priority for the European Union. Something also came very clearly from the discussion. It is about making sure that people have access to the right diet. There was a question of uh, avoiding uh, post-harvest losses, in particular waste. The question of having the right, I would say, quantity of food. This is something uh, which is very important. But at the end, we want people to have enough food and the right quality of food with, at the end, uh, being sufficiently uh, fed and also not uh, suffering from micronutrient deficiency. This is extremely important. There is also some questions that you have been raising uh, and that are not maybe uh, fully developed in the policies. What is the role of trade? Some people presented trade as an opportunity, some others are presenting trade as a threat. Obviously it can be both and maybe more reflection about what is the good trade and what is a bad trade in the same way uh, that we have good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. Uh, that's something which is very important. 
something that also maybe uh, I was expecting to see a bit more that I have not seen uh, so much is also the balance between food production and also other agricultural commodities. We need those commodities. I mean, we want to keep uh, the privilege of to wear shirts which are in cotton, and not only in nylon. Uh, we will need also many uh, agricultural commodities still to have car driving uh, on the street because we still need rubber. There are so many things that we need, and this is also, for me, subject to a reflection. Because at the end, we don't want still to put the a breakfast of a child into the tire of the car, uh, not, be, not even thinking about putting it in the tank of the car. So this is certainly a question of also ethic, moral, governance of the, uh, of the food system, which is very important. Uh, at the end, uh, certainly something which is making us more and more, uh, I would say, buzz in terms of reflection and policy, is what is the role of the rural world? Uh, Jules uh, about, spoke about the role of the farmer, certainly, yes, they are there to produce food, agricultural commodities, economic wealth, but also to manage the ecosystem. And we need maybe to see how much we are going to pay for that. And they are also there, they have also to adapt to new challenges. Less resources, climate change, new threats, invasive, invasive species. So uh, how much are we going to have to pay for the food? And if we move to the fact that also the agriculture has a potential to also uh, do carbon sequestration, so to promote mitigation to climate change, then we need to see also what are we going to ask them to do. Basically, this is the role of the rural world that we want to see uh, to play versus the cities. Not in opposition, but I would say as a complementarity. This is, uh, um, uh, but I would like really to thank you for all the uh, insight you gave me. And it will be certainly uh, extremely important for us and also for the team. I have some colleagues who are there on board. And uh, for me, it was extremely uh, interesting. Thank you for the invitation and congratulations for all the participants. And by the way, it is uh, among the uh, two panels we, which, uh, which I have been taking part, which were the most, I would say, interactive uh, by design. Just, yeah. <laughs> Whether I want to say something? <laughs> um, well, I think it's, it's wonderful input from you. Um, and actually, we've accomplished a lot in just uh, over an hour. So we could even think what we would accomplish if we keep you know, talking to each other for, uh, for longer, but actually the sessions will be closed. Um, I think that what comes after the vision is to talk about actions. And as already one group was taking on board was to say that that, that is actually where, where we should be spending most of our time in discussing, because we effectively, we all agree that, uh, especially when you bring the element of social justice on board, that the right to food should be expanded towards the right to food and nutrition, or the right to the right to nutritious food. I heard quite a bit just about the role of governance in this whole, uh, in, in bring, getting to that point, and also making sure that the different actors in the food chain have a say as to the food that they, that they are provided with and the food that they consume, and their opportunities to make a living out of, out of food or agricultural activities. So I think that from there on, if, if we can sort of maintain this sense of commonality in our action planning, then we can actually make really big steps because some of the hard choices will have to be made uh, in the food system, you know, a more open, uh, uh, towards a more open uh, food system, a more diverse uh, uh, food production. And I think it's the sphere of commonality that you need to get there. So I want to thank you very much.